Hi, welcome to Milio Guide. I'm Margaret Martin, and today we're going to be talking about FRACS, which is short for Fracture Risk Assessment. And this is a tool that was developed in conjunction with uh, many countries, so there's 34 countries involved in total with the World he- within the World Health Organization to provide clinicians with a picture of an individual's bone quality in order to help clinicians make a decision for their clients or with their clients as to what is the best therapeutic approach to help them with um, reducing their fracture risk. And so what was happening was a lot of um, people were fracturing and they had relatively good bone mineral density scores, and yet um, people with poor bone mineral density scores were not fracturing. And so they said, well, you know, there's more involved than just the density of the bone. And so the FRACs, as we go through the questions, these are all things that give clinicians a picture into the quality of someone's bones. So we will go through the questionnaire together. But right now, um, I'd like to just um, walk you through how to get to your FRACs. And so as physical therapists, we have a lot more time than the GPs to be going through uh, FRACs. And I find a lot of my clients, um, both that see me in the clinic and from around the world that uh, email me or uh, connect with me, will ask me questions about whether or not they should be on pharmaceuticals. And my question to them is always, have you done your FRACs? And so, or has someone done your FRACs? And usually they have no idea what a FRACs is, and they have not um, had that information shared with them. So here we go. We'll look at uh, FRACs. And so in order to start, what I suggest you do um, at home is to enter in Google, uppercase F-R-A-X. And that will take you to the first entry, which is Welcome to FRAX. And you can click on your Welcome to FRAX, which is from the University of Sheffield. And you'll see a picture of Dr. John Canis. We're now going to go to the top and find the calculation tool. Within the calculation tool, there are choices of continents, and the continent that you choose and and then the country that you choose should be either your place of birth or the place you're living in. And so what you can actually do is do both and then do a comparison because that is the, the most accurate way of getting a picture of your bone health. Your country of birth will give you information on the genetics leading up to um, your move. And then your place where you're living now gives information on your bone health related to sun exposure and those kinds of things, diet. So I'm going to choose North America, easy for me, which is where I live and was born. And I'm going to go right into Canada. And we're going to use a fictitious client, so Mary Smith. And Mary is 50, 1961, and June 15th. Now, the first question, or second question, is an easy one. So Mary is female. Now, in Canada, we still tend to use uh, pounds and inches when we do our measurements. And so if we go over to the conversion box on the right-hand side, it will give us that information. Um, automatically. So Mary's 130 pounds and she is 5 foot 3 or 63 inches. And note when you push to convert it automatically brings the data in to the questionnaire. Next the question is on previous fracture. So whether Mary had one previous fracture or seven previous fractures she is to answer yes or no. And so Mary has had one previous fracture the next question is on the parent hip fracture, and her, uh, neither her mother or father have fractured a hip. Mary is no longer a smoker, so we'll keep that as no. Mary is um, not taking glucocorticosteroids currently. However, when Mary was in her 30s, um, she was on a course of glucocorticosteroids um, for about two and a half months. And so we're going to keep that as no because the question is really about whether someone's been on a dosage of greater than five milligrams per day for three months or longer. And so um, they found that that dosage has uh, you know, a significant negative impact on bones. And so 
Certainly if someone is on a much higher dosage, that's something that has to be weighed into the equation um, with the clinical decision make, making um, at the end of the FRAX. Or if someone's been on you know, a very mild dose for longer periods of time, although they might not fit into you know, the yes answer, it is still um, something to be taken into account. Next, question number nine is rheumatoid arthritis, whether or not she has it, and no, she does not. And then number 10 is whether or not Mary has secondary osteoporosis. Secondary osteoporosis is when you have been diagnosed with osteoporosis that is caused not just by reaching menopause and, and a normal process of losing bone, but rather caused by an underlying disease process, whether it be kidney disease, diabetes, um, intestinal absorption problems, celiac, or long-term use of certain medications. So all of those things fall into secondary osteoporosis. And we are going to click on yes for Mary there. And then number 11 is whether or not um, there is consumption of more than three units of alcohol per day, and that's going to be a no. So when we go down to number 12, the femoral neck bone mineral density. This is in grams per centimeter squared. So I know many of my clients and many of you listening will be given just your T-score. But this, the information that you want to make this calculation much more accurate is the machine that your, your bone mineral density was done on. So under the DEXA, when you click and you, you have a pull-down bar, the different names of the machines are listed. So on your, if you can get a copy of your client's or your own bone mineral density test result, you will see on the sheet what machine it was done on. And so we'll pick the Hologic as a, an example. And then you want the grams in centimeter squared. And so we'll pick um, 0.5 grams per centimeter squared and push Calculate. Now, as it's calculating, I'm going to just bring up a point. If you only have the T-score, then what happens with that is that you um, are then having, for Mary, because she's Caucasian and she's a female, she is um, being compared against other female Caucasians. And so she doesn't have to convert her T-score in any way. It's you know been normalized for her. If you are not female and you're not Caucasian, then you do need to go and normalize the data if you're using the T-score. And so um, there is a link to a website, Dr. Susan Ott's website at the University of Washington, that we will provide for you that you can, if you, again, are not Caucasian and you're not female, that you can use your T-score, convert that over, then bring it back into the FRAX box and when you have the choice of just um, the data being um, that you're entering and you choose T-score, use the T-score that is provided you by Dr. Susan Ott's website. All right, so let's just look now in the red box. You'll all be given, uh, once you do the calculation, you will be given a red box score and it has what the BMI is, it then has listed the 10-year probability of a fracture. So for Mary, with the questions that we answered, her 10-year probability of a fracture, major osteoporotic fracture, is 13%. And her 10-year probability of a hip fracture is 4.8%. Now, within different countries, each country has chosen different guidelines as to recommendations for pharmaceuticals. Within Canada, we look at the major osteoporotic fracture percentage. And Mary's sitting right in the middle. So 13% is the percentage point somewhere between 10 and 20, where it's really wise to sit down with the clinician and go, hmm, you know, what is the picture of my bone health? You know, if we went back and although Mary put in no for smoking, if she had been a two-pack-a-day smoker for 20 years, although she's not currently smoker smoking, we might be thinking that her bone quality is not as high as the fracture risk assessment tool is giving us. 
Um, so those kind of things. And if Mary had had, you know, seven previous fractures, although the data entered is the same as whether she had only one, again, we might be weighing, you know, looking at, hmm, maybe Mary's bone health isn't quite as as good as, as we're, we're seeing in this little answer picture here. And so it was a very complex tool to develop, and so they couldn't allow for, you know, one fracture, two fractures, all the different variables, nor could they allow for all the different variables of smoking patterns. And so it is really just a clinical tool giving us a picture of bone health that is stable. So that's important as well. When the clini clinical judgment is being made is as to whether or not pharmaceuticals are warranted and or you know how aggressive to be on an exercise program, that um, picture is for someone who is stable at this time. And so if I knew that Mary was recently diagnosed with cancer and that Mary was going to be on some strong medication that would also be affecting her bone health, or she had had, you know, an epileptic um, seizure and she was going to be put on medication for her epilepsy, medications that are going to negatively affect her bone health, then those things are tell me, telling me that her bone health is no longer stable and actually um, being affected by her other medical conditions that she's um, having to deal with. And so those are things that allow us then to make a better decision, help uh, your, the, the medical doctors and specialists in the area make a better decision as to the best treatment approach for an individual. So I hope that this tutorial has given you a little window into how FRAX is used and the uh, questions that are asked and the parameters that are taken into consideration when looking both at um, bone quality and bone density in order to determine the fracture risk for an individual and in order to help clinicians make the best decision for a better quality of life. So that's all today on Milo Guide and we'll look forward to talking to you again.